Why do guys have so many sexual partners? And for people that feel like they need to have somebody in their life to be happy, I don't even think you're ready for a relationship. Come on. Is it good for guys who have had sexual relationships with their ex to still be friends with them? Here we go, I'm catching man. feelings for I'm you and honestly... I'm you and child the same the time. Man, you're She's a runner, runner she's a track star. <laughs> God told me you're God. my wife. Open up your heart. To the words of the Father from above Open up your heart Open up your heart Open up your heart Hey guys! Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Amaka And my name is... Em <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey guys! <laughs> hey guys! Hey guys! Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Amaka, A-M-A-K-A-A. -A 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 -A. And my name is DeAndre. <laughs> and his name is DeAndre. He did not wait for me to introduse him, but we ain't gonna do this again. Anyways, guys, this is DeAndre, and he is, this is your second time, third time on my channel. He was the second guest that I ever had on my channel. That was pretty cool. We were very young. You can go check it out. He looks different now with his hair. Yeah, but... hair is a lot shorter. If you're new to my channel, welcome to the Open Up Your Heart channel. Please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. All this good stuff, and let's get right into the video. I asked on my Instagram and on my WhatsApp status on all my social media for people to send in questions that they have for guys, either girls, questions that girls have for guys, or questions that guys have for guys that they've always wondered. To be honest, I think I also chose DeAndre because I know his life and I've like watched him so much. He's an inspiration. He's that big brother that everybody needs in their life kind of thing. It's like check in, check in. He loves jollof rice and he's just addicted to jollof rice, guys. Nigerian at heart. So terrible. It's like everything is jollof rice. I'm yep. like, child, relax. Introduced it to me and I was hooked ever since. And chin chin. And chin chin. And puff puff. Puff puff. <laughs> First question. All right. First question is, what should we girls be looking for in a husband? What should what should be some turnoffs or red flags from a boy's point of view? If a girl's looking for like a husband, I'm mostly gonna say first off, you guys need to see if you're ready for marriage first and foremost. So like, make sure that he's ready. He's obviously in a place that's financially able to obviously sustain you and himself. Mm -hmm. Potentially one day, and if not, if he has something on his sh a head on his shoulders and like a plan in place, I'm not saying you have to be perfect to be married or have to look for that, or everything has to be on the checklist for this. But there are some principles that you can go off of that would be best wise to look out for, like in terms of looking for a spouse. Amanda obviously is afraid to commit, that is number one, an issue. And I've noticed this even in the past, is growing up, you see a lot of people they grow up in relationships and they're not even in relationships, it's more like situationships. And for the younger people, you know, entanglements as a joke is what you call it. That's number one red flag. A guy that's afraid to commit. A guy, obviously, that's afraid to not even just be honest. If he can't be honest with himself, he most likely won't be honest with you. I'd say that's a red flag, because first off, there may be an issue and you may see it, but he's not even honest with himself to even address it. Therefore, he won't be honest with you to go through it. Mm. Um, I know you guys say like red flags to look up for in guys, but also it's just Don't think you can fix go into a situation that's broken and think you can fix it And I know that's more so what girls a lot of girls are like hey, I can fix him Let me let me be that one good girl to him that will change him if there's an Individual that you have interest or that's you're looking their way and they're going through a bad situation where they're not there I think the most wise thing you can do is take that space mm -hmm. and create that space because you don't want to end up in a predicament where you're trapped in this cycle and it's almost like a washing machine you're just going around <laughs> it's a washing <laughs> machine. machine you're literally on the wash cycle repeat over and over going I'm around so, done. so you don't want that that's good it's a big no-no also if he's afraid to respect boundaries that's also another or issue or he doesn't like not even afraid mm -hmm. it's mostly like just like doesn't see the essence of if he it. doesn't see you yeah and first off you need to first and foremost if he's a Christian, you need to make sure that this guy is a Christian first off and he has a relationship with the Lord himself. Because hmm. first off, if he has a relationship with the Lord, he's going to know 
what boundaries to respect. Mm. And I think it's good to communicate that. Mm. And if he doesn't respect your boundaries, I think that's a big no-go, that's a big red flag. Um, for someone like that, I think you gotta look at even how they treat as things as just even looking at how they treat other women, other mm -hmm. like how they view women, mm -hmm. and if they see them as people and not just an object, you really gotta look up for codependency. Because I find that nowadays a lot of people in the relationship they look into relationships thinking of, can you complete me? Mm -hmm. You complete me, but no, like you gotta think about going into a, a marriage of serving yourself. Is he selfless? How does he treat his mother? How does he? Um, Treat even the woman in his family, not even just his mother, but mm -hmm. even little things like that will give you hints of how he may treat his spouse and how mm -hmm. he's upbringing. It's his father in his life. Mm -hmm. Just little things just to observe. I'm not saying if he doesn't have a father in his life, oh, run away from him. But I'm just saying <laughs> little things of how he treats. Yeah. That's little just pointers of mm -hmm. how you can look up for good and wrong, mm -hmm. obviously, right? Because mm -hmm. I obviously didn't have a father in my life. So that doesn't mean throw the whole baby up with the bathwater of these principles I'm telling you. But it's just wisdom to go by. Wow. It's not something that's hardcore yeah. that has to. But it's just wisdom to go by that you need, should look out for. I recommend. Yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. Hey. Second question. Some girls feel like they need a man's attention to feel wanted and loved. Mm. What's your response to that? Yeah, that's another good question. I think that mm. falls again on the topic of codependency. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you need somebody to make you happy and you search for that, you're never going to be happy. And I think it's the same with anything in life. If you feel like you need an object, a person, a thing, an animal a thing, to make you happy, it's not going to make you happy. It's going to bring mm -hmm. you temporary joy to the mm -hmm. point where I even think that you're going to put all your insecurities, all your expectations on them, and that's going to become like an idol in your life. And that person is mm -hmm. going to be your, your, your God, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And especially with Christians now, mm -hmm. nobody in our life should have that much value and be have that much authority, authority yeah. over your happiness mm -hmm. other than God, mm -hmm. Jesus. And I think you should put your... Focus on Jesus and for people that feel like they need to have somebody in their life to be happy I don't even think you're ready for a relationship. Come on. So you get to be <laughs> honest because the moment you jump in a relationship You're gonna look for you're them, gonna to, look for them to fill you. all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, to validate you and I don't even think that's that's not even good And that's toxic in of itself it is. to the point where you don't even know it, but you're gonna drive the relationship into the ground, yeah. or that's gonna cause it into the ground. Yeah. Go to a bit more juicier questions here. <laughs> why do guys have so many sexual partners and don't see anything wrong with that? The reason why women can't sleep around is because women, by nature, are more emotional. They're more, I'm not saying like they're, they think from their emotions, but they're more emotional feelings, and for a woman, when they look for a relationship, they look for security. They look for protection. They want to feel like their needs are being met. They need to make sure that they're being dealt with on an emotional level mm. before they can sleep with anyone. Mm. Now, when it comes to guys, we don't need that. We're visual. We're visual by nature. So what mm. we see, women are more driven by what they hear and what they observe. But for us, it's what we see. All right, another juicier question. You okay. ready? Juicier, okay. Is it good for guys who have had sexual relationships with their ex to still be friends with them? Give a reason if yes or no. Okay, so I'm leaning on no. And I stand concrete on no. Simply because the moment you have a relationship with someone, and again, no boundaries were set in place and you guys went the full nine yards and you guys passed it, mm -hmm. it's very easy to go back into. As a matter of fact, if you guys have a relationship and you're friends and you pass that point of where like you're no longer friends and there's more to it, I don't personally think you can ever be friends with that person simply just again. There'll always be a remnant of emotions. Mm. Going back onto the wisdom aspect, I don't think it would be wise, especially as a Christian and you stumbled in a relationship with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, and you're trying to be pursue God. I don't think it would be wise to have that constant temptation around you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not impossible, but at the same time, I'm going to say I highly don't recommend it that you be friends with your ex, especially if you had sexual relations with them, because there's going to be opportunities when you may feel weak. 
And as Christians, the Bible says you want to flee sexual normality. You don't want to give no place for the enemy. Just mm -hmm. a step forward for the devil. And I think ultimately through friendship, through that familiarity with that individual, with that chemistry already going on and how easy it may be to talk to that person, mm -hmm. um, how you guys feel already secure mm -hmm. with each other, it'll just be an easy opportunity to mm -hmm. slip back into that mm -hmm. habit. So if it is, or if you guys happen to be in the same happen to come together where it is setting there has to be people around at all times how do you set boundaries with girls like right. and i just want to give an example when i was like 18 when i was in high school uh i remember like deandre would like pick me up to church and everything would like go together and everything and i used to sit at the front of his car and then they came a season where he was like ciao okay he didn't say it like this well whoever calls shotgun gets to ride in the front seat right yep. For one man, it wasn't so simple. I remember, I would never forget that conversation because you were like, oh, like, um, I would like if you said the back from now on, mm -hmm. you know, and just like, and I was like, wait, what? Like, what's happening here? And he's like, oh, like, mm -hmm. you know, I just want like my wife and my my mom to sit here from now on. I mean, mm -hmm. he's not married, but like in that moment, like you could feel that honor, like towards even the woman yes. that was coming into your life or the woman who will come into your yes. life or whatever. And just like, and at first I was like, child. And, I, and, and then, like, I, was, I have such a deep respect mm -hmm. for you. And now, like, even because of how I saw you intentionally set boundaries, because I look up to you so many ways, I was like, child, I'm going to set boundaries myself with guys. Mm -hmm. And it's Amen. not just, like, sitting, like, in front of the car with guys. Like, it's even the conversations I have, like, how deep it goes. I'm like, yo, whoa, like, you ain't my husband. Child, we ain't talking about that topic. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I'm just like, but how do you set boundaries with girls? And, like, why did you do that in that time? So, basically, when it came to that season of my life, I was honestly, just in a part where I was hardcore pursuing God I don't know there was it was almost like I had blindfolders and I didn't come up with that idea myself somebody who I highly respected at the time I even heard that as just a principle and the principle behind it was just protecting yourself as a young single man a young Christian who's on fire for God who wants to go hardcore and just wants to go straight and narrow uh, just to eliminate any temptations Although I know me and Amako, like obviously, like it's, that's my younger sister and everything, and like those are an idea, like think something that came across the mind. But it's just something to protect yourself and also for the sake of the other person. Especially if you're a young Christian, you have high charisma, and people look at you right. You don't want to lead people into thinking that you have something going on between between the two of you when there mm -hmm. isn't. So for me, I did that as just a place as just like you know. For now on, it's only my mom or my future wife that's gonna sit in the front seat. So I know a lot of people may look at that as extreme, but for that season in my life, I really felt right there and then that it was crucial to apply that. I don't wanna to come to a place where I may accidentally lead a woman on or where she gets mm -hmm. a wrong idea thinking that there's right. something special between the two of us when there really isn't. And not only that, even if there was something going on between the person, it would even eliminate temptation. It's literally straight to the point to our destination and there and literally is and that's the best way i was convicted for that season season just to honor god yeah that was so good and i think like at first i was like mm -hmm. bro what in the world's happening right now and then like i started to respect that and the thing about your boundaries is some people some people might like they might like take offense and be like oh really yeah. But like when you understand that wisdom is profitable to direct, first of all, and second of all, like your life is a living Bible for some people to yeah. read. Like in that moment, like in that time, I was in high school and I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like this is like, this is crazy amazing. Like, yeah. you know, and just like from that moment on, I intentionally said to myself, I'm going to set boundaries as well. I'm going to set boundaries with my guy friends. I'm going to set boundaries. If I see that there's yeah. like an overstepping where like I'm not catching feelings and you're not trying to protect my heart and you're just like, like leading me on with nothing there, then I'm going to call you and be like, child, we go out to set boundaries here. We're going to yeah. have to take a break here. We're I'm gonna catching have to, feelings for I'm you and honestly, you and child, this ain't the time. <laughs> like, it ain't you know? the time. But how do you like, how else like can people set boundaries? Like, is it just Oh, a hundred percent. Like, especially when it comes to just friends of the opposite sex. Like mm -hmm. if you guys are hanging out, especially if they're friends, do it in settings. You don't yeah. need to like one-on-one -on -one doesn't really need to be a thing mm -hmm. unless like, it doesn't need to be a thing, mm -hmm. especially like you guys want to go to a movie. I don't think so. And again, it goes back to the question of if you think guys and girls can be friends. Mm -hmm. I think guys and girls can be friends to a degree. Mm -hmm. Elaborate on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. But to a degree, um, 
yeah, like I see when I see you and we talk and mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can be friends casually, but if it comes to the point where you guys are talking every day, you're on the phone till 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. at night or 3 a.m. in the morning even, feelings are being caught. Don't, tell, <laughs> don't, don't even tell me, don't tell me you he can be friends with tables. your old friends. Don't tell me you can be friends with no. your guy friends or your girlfriends and you guys are talking until 3 a.m. in the morning every day, talking about your deepest, darkest secrets, you're just opening it up about your life, about what happened, your childhood trauma, just little things like that, your little jokes, you guys are laughing. Over time, you're going to look over at your friend and you're going to be like, hmm, maybe, hmm. <laughs> And because there's that security bubble already with there, it's just gonna be easy. Yeah. It obviously doesn't happen to everyone, but I'm saying for most majority, yeah. Especially obviously if you find them attractive or if you guys ain't ugly. Like that's personally what I think. <laughs> um, when it we comes to the hundred. Yes, yes. So Good. obviously other ways you can set boundaries with your friends, like like even when it comes to I guess hugging and stuff like that. Just be careful of this entertaining stuff like that. Side hugs only. Honestly, not, I don't want to sound too legalistic on the matter, but like honestly, what you know you can handle and just That's don't good. put yourself in an area or in an environment where you can be tempted. I know that there are a lot of girls who have like had like really bad experiences with guys and they're like, oh, there isn't Christian guys out there, there isn't like godly men out there and everything. Like nobody's perfect mm -hmm. Like we all need Jesus. But like growing up and seeing like even Dre like honoring people, it gave me so much hope. I was like, there is hope in this world. <laughs> they're Christian guys who have a brain and they use it, they read the word, and they're not perfect, but they're teachable. And we all have our struggles, but I just hope this video so encourages people as well, like yeah. girls that you know, like yeah, they're good people out there, child. Don't bring down your standards. Don't bring down your standards, especially like you said, like even when you. Don't you think that that Christian guy doesn't exist? Trust me, there is. And a lot of it comes to just trusting in God that God will provide and in due time that you will find the right one. And I've heard this quote, and it's usually just used in the friends of uh, friendship, but we can use it in the friends of just even looking for a potential spouse. And they say, fake friends are like leaves. They're everywhere on the ground. But good friends are like diamonds, and they, they're hard to come by, and they're rare. Likewise, as like even like just average, the average guy, the average partner, even for guys who are watching, the average woman out here, like don't lower your standard. Yeah, gems are hard to come by, but when you find that gem and you find that one individual person, it will be worth it. That weight will be worth it. And trust in God with the process, trust in it, because not everyone obviously out here is living as honest as they could be. How do you handle stalkers? They're so like, Run. they are. <laughs> Be a track star at that point. Be a she's runner, a runner, she's a track, track star. star. God told me you're God. my wife. That type of stuff. First and foremost, I think it'll be wise to tell someone. Tell someone you trust. Tell mm -hmm. an adult, obviously, for those of you who are mm -hmm. underage. Tell someone you trust and let it be known. You feel uncomfortable with the situation. You feel like someone's stalking you. In case something escalates, people know. Hmm. I think for first and foremost, you got to do that. Communicate it. Let the person know that they're coming off if you feel comfortable. Communicate with them and be like, I'm sorry, this is where I'm at and I appreciate it. And if not, I'm going to just be simple. I personally would just block them. I would block them. I would just say, just cut it right there and just let it be known. you see know. the person around? If you see the person, and I know a lot of people are afraid to, are afraid to hurt someone's feelings, but if it helps, have a friend be present with you and just tell them like, hey, you know, I know you feel such a way, God told me you're my wife or whatever it may be, but like, honestly, I'm not in a place where I feel like you're the one for me, I'm in a, ready for a relationship. Just be honest and don't be afraid to communicate if you can. And I'm, that's turning the person that's on. That's turning me, like, yeah. Like, oh, like, you, like, I, like again, do you mm -hmm. want to eliminate any possibility of grounds for them to fantasize and create an idea in their head of like, oh, so she is playing hard to get. Let just be let it be straight. Don't give them mixed signals. Be consistent. It's so good. Be consistent. That's yeah. so good. What a, what a what uh, for me I think I'm to say. <laughs> say the same thing of mm -hmm. just like you. First of all I would be like block them. Like block them. Block them. Block block nah, yo, like. If they say I feel a spark between us, just be like, <laughs> What spark? <laughs> 
don't know what spark to you. Like, if God has spoken to you about me, then I believe that if I'm a Christian and I have the Holy Spirit inside of Hallelujah. me, He's going to bear witness yes, to what you he said, will. right? So if I have not hear, heard that, then I'm not going to follow you anywhere, right? Oh, 100%. Like, and I think a lot of guys also use this, you know, with like Christian girls. They're like, ah, God told me you're my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you are so tantalizing. <laughs> Gosh. Important thing, I, I heard that after salvation, the most important thing is the person you marry. Yes. So I'm not gonna like go and like like twat my destiny with you because of like, oh, you said thou sees the Lord this and yeah. that. Like, you know, and just like, yeah. Oh, honestly, respect people's yeah. boundaries. Like, I don't think there's such a thing. I don't think there's, there's no such thing as soulmates. <laughs> because there's like, it's like, oh, like, this is my soulmate, and then like, it's like, oh, this person forever. No. And because like, no, here's the folly in that type of logic. Suppose your soulmate marries a long wrong person. Does that mean that other person they married, they missed their soulmate, and then the other person missed that their soulmate, and now it's a like whole <laughs> messy domino effect that people miss the we soulmates? Have, no, we will not be here right we now. We will not be here right now. Exactly. So personally, I think that we do have a choice on who we marry based mm -hmm. off of the wisdom, mm -hmm. and we do choose our spouses. Obviously, there are. It makes more sense and just certain situations how like yeah like our paths come together in a sense of like yeah it's like it makes more sense that god wants us together and this is how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. but god in his sovereignty knows what he's doing and obviously he'll hook you up with the person that's meant to be but there's not that the one mm -hmm. and honestly i think that you, two people that can come together and make it work uh god can bless that marriage and turn it into something amazing even if people like even prophesied in your life and like so and so is gonna be your wife don't even like you gotta test it you gotta test wow. everything you hear everything. and like what Amaka was saying Amaka was saying that it's best to hear from God yourself before someone else t comes and tell you that because the last thing you need to do is rush and do something because somebody told you it and wow. you didn't even confirm that with yourself or with wow. God my bad not even yourself wow. but God didn't even confirm that with you we're not saying that prophecy mm -hmm. is fake or like no. there isn't any need for prophecy mm -hmm. or prophets because and the power of a prophet also is like so many times or this is how it should work because you have yeah. the Holy Spirit living on the side of you you should have heard the word of God and then the prophet comes as a confirmation amen he doesn't come as like direction for your life yeah. like oh do this do that do this do that and of course there are times when like you might not hear mm -hmm. or whatever and you're in a messy situation i don't yeah. know but ideally what a prophet should do in your life is confirm the word of god that god has already spoken over you and even sometimes they would say it with the scripture or probably yeah. that mature it needs design, to be in line with scripture of it like, needs where to be. is this scripturally found and we really need to go back to that christianity yes. where it's like biblically found then i believe it not yeah. biblically found bye yeah literally because yeah. a lot of people are just falling into so many traps and yeah. you're being emotionally abused by even spiritual uh -huh. leaders and different things like that yeah because you're not testing but the bible literally mm -hmm. says test, test it. it all like literally test the fruit on the tree like test yeah. it first right did they have fruits of the spirit are they lacking some areas yeah. You know, and just, yeah, wisdom is profitable to direct. This has come to the end of this Q&A with uh, DeAndre. Uh, we're going to do a part two where it was talking, where we're going to mainly be talking about, like, guys. Guys, make sure you like, yes. comment, share, subscribe this here in the comments below uh, what stood out to you from this conversation as well. But, yeah, thank you, DeAndre, for coming on today's talk. Thanks for having me. It was great to see you guys for a third time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to see us for a fourth. And I'm going to see you for a fourth time. Yeah, soon. Sometime soon. Sometime soon. But yeah, stay tuned, guys. Bye for now. See ya. So I feel like a lot of guys struggle with pornography, of course. Better in your brain. If you lay a brain scan of a person who has a crack cocaine addiction next to the person who has pornography addiction, it's, same. it's actually the same. As a single guy, what are some of the biggest challenges you have had to overcome? Open up your heart. Open up your heart.